I have been working so hard to get this canvas to this point. Welcome to Stone Magpie for this whip and chat and completion. Let's see how we get on. I've only got this tiny bit here to finish. Oh, yes, I have been working, 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 working at this canvas. So I don't think it's going to take that much longer to get this section finished. Now, I was talking recently about how it feels to get to this point on a canvas when you have a really lovely one waiting for you to get started with. So I am desperately trying to enjoy the end of this one. And I've got lots to show you once this section is complete. We've got all sorts of things to look at on this canvas. So I thought I would do a little tiny whip and chat as I finished this one so that you can hold my hand and calm me down a little bit and I might enjoy it a little bit more because as I say my head is just going to the next canvas all the time and it's naughty. This is such a beautiful canvas it deserves to have a wonderful finish. So thank you for being here to hold my hand while I do this one and I hope that you're painting along with me on a canvas that you are really enjoying too. I am going to give my final thoughts at the end of this video when I show you all sorts of different things on the canvas and about, oh I'm not going to give it away, just keep watching, keep diamond painting and uh, We'll get there, won't we guys? We'll get there. Oh, this is fab. And I've been really lucky. As I say, I've been working really hard on this canvas to get to this point. Um, I've been able to do that really because my husband's gone away on a little camping trip. And um, so I don't have to feel so guilty about spending so much time on my diamond painting. Because that's what happens, isn't it? you know, it's given, it's swings and roundabouts, isn't it? We want to spend time painting, but we also need family time and it's getting that balance sometimes to be able to get everything done in our lives, especially when we're working as well. So yeah, I feel fortunate to have had this extra time. So... <laughs> He's even um, taken Monty with him, so I am completely alone. So we won't have that problem of um, Monty, you know, joining in as he does sometimes, chipping in with his little bits of information. Usually that consists of, there's a bird in the garden. <laughs> to be honest, that's what it's mainly about, to let you know there's birds in the garden. But... Um, yeah, so I've I've got that under control as well this time. Although I really am missing him a lot. Aww. But he'll be back soon, not much longer now. And he'll have a lovely time because my husband's gone to a beautiful spot. It's the um, northernmost part of Scotland. So it is fabulous and... Um, we both went there last year on the camping trip. You may well have seen a video that I did while we were there with Laura and we were doing some diamond painting and her dog, let's say, interrupted us. <laughs> and we had to stop filming to sort the table out and, oh, that was funny. And we were right on the edge of um, sort of a bay there. If you've not seen that video, I will pop it in the eye because it was it was funny. And we Laura had never diamond painted before, so I got some little kits, um, some little key rings, and we were doing those with this little um, sort of portable table that we'd got with us. And uh, yeah, it was a beautiful place. So Monty will be having a fantastic time on that shore. <laughs> Do you remember um, there were the cows there as well? Oh, it was quite, it was, 
it was uh, yeah an interesting video to film that one it was a bit like the initial stone magpie on tour video <laughs> uh, yeah it was fun so that's where they are until later on this week so I'm, I'm just trying to get as much diamond painting done as I can. So I'm just loving it. I'm loving my time. And um, as I say, I've got a beautiful one to kit up next. So I'm so lucky. Because I've also taken some time off work this week. And um, it's worked out really well. It's beautiful weather in the UK and where I live there's sort of an event that goes on yearly and it creates such traffic problems um, that I thought right I'm going to take the week off work so that I don't have to try and um, drive through this traffic to where I work to because it is honestly a bit of a nightmare. The event itself is fabulous. Um, but it's just the practicalities of living where I do during that week in summer. So yeah, I've got all of this time. Oh, I'm so lucky. So I hope that you've had loads of time to do some diamond painting this week too and got um, a really good go at it. Trying to find all of these little bits and bobs. And I did put some new pink wax in my pen just before starting. So I can tell it's sort of coming off a little bit in places. So I'll keep my eye on that as well. My mum came to see me yesterday. And um, I'm laughing after my last whip and chat when I was talking about Glastonbury. And um, yeah, somebody commented about my mum sounds like super gran. <laughs> yeah, she's fab is my mum. She really is fab. And she does do diamond painting every so often as well. Um, in summertime, she tends to get her paints out and does painting. And then when it comes to winter, she tends to go back to the diamond painting for a while. Although saying that, she's done a recent diamond painting as well because she finds it so much more relaxing um, rather than having to mix her paints and experiment and things like that. So, yeah, so Mum came round yesterday with Dave and they brought me a garden parasol for the bench and it looks fab. So we've got it up outside and the garden looks so much better with it. So... She was so generous. Um, I'll take a picture and pop it up on screen so you can see it. And it's there in the sunshine, looking great. And um, I did wonder whether I might be able to sit outside and diamond paint on the bench now that the parasol's up. But um, yeah, it wasn't great. So I'm back in my conservatory. Um, I will have the window open when I'm not filming, but I can't have the window open and film, so I'm absolutely sweltered. <laughs> See, I've got a big bit of pink wax off there. Just got to... So yes, I am rather warm at the moment because it is boiling. We're not used to it in the UK. And we've had this sort of heat wave going on. So I'm sat here in shorts and a t-shirt and I certainly won't be on film. <laughs> so when we get to the end of this celebration, I won't be doing a drum roll stood up this time. Um, so just get some Tic Tac boxes ready. If you've not seen my channel before and my completion videos, we shake our Tic Tacs at the completion. So do get those ready to do that along with, and I'll give you plenty of warning when it's time. And imagine us all doing that at the same time. <laughs> but yes, 
I sometimes do drum rolls and stand up and march about and things, but I'm not doing that in my shorts, so <laughs> you can forget it. <laughs> we'll celebrate in a different way around that sort of um, behaviour. <laughs> oh dear. Okay. Now, I have been a bit worried about this particular colour. This is the M code. And I haven't got very many left, but I've been getting quite tense about it because, as you can see, I haven't got many left. And when I've poured them into the tray, you'll probably be able to see here, a lot of them are not usable. I haven't pulled them out yet. I keep pulling odd ones out as I go along. So that one has like a nobule on it. And these ones are dimpled. And I will be showing you my... Um, leftovers at the end of the video so you can see um, how many I pulled out during this diamond painting. So I think that's it for this tray full and I'll pop them over there to add to the tray. So I've been getting a bit tense about whether I would actually have enough and I kept telling myself well don't be silly stop getting tense because if I don't have enough, I can contact Dreamer Designs and test out their insurance for providing more, um, which probably would have been a good idea to let you know what happens. But I think we're actually going to be OK. So that's good news. I think that's all of the M's done now. So I did have a few left after all. And isn't it silly when we're supposed to be relaxing and we're getting tense over things? Um, so yes, I had to have a little word with myself. It's, it's just frustrating, isn't it, when um, you put all your work into something, if the diamonds are not available at the end. But as I say, Dreamer Designs do have that insurance to, you know, so you can get some more. I don't know how long it takes and I don't know the process. So as I say, that would have been quite good in a way to get checked out. Um, but at the same time, I want to finish mine. I don't want to wait for more diamonds, so. So we're speeding along now and um, there's some beautiful colours, a lot of colours just in this one corner and I'm really excited about showing you the rest of the picture because you haven't really seen this one for a while. Although I have done um, little updates on Instagram as I've been going along. So if you follow me on Instagram, you'll have seen probably more than um, viewers on YouTube. If you don't know, then um, it's Stone Magpie Eleven on Instagram. If you want to find me on there, because I do um, take photos sometimes and give little updates. And if you do find me on there, and you and you do follow. Leave a comment, let me know that you're coming over so that, um, I know, I, I am nosy, you know, I like to know where people are coming from and how they find me and things. So, thank you. And I also have noticed that my subscribers have gone up quite a bit. I am so grateful to you all. Thank you so much. Honestly, I get some lovely comments from people. I got one this morning, actually, and it just made me glow with pleasure. Um, oh, just people are so lovely, and it's just a gorgeous community. So, honestly, I, I know I say it all the time, and you must get sick of me hearing, hearing me say it, but thank you, everybody. The joy that you give me is so oh, undescribable. It really is. Anyway, I talked about that in my last whip and chat quite a bit, so I won't reiterate, but just know that um, the feeling is there. <laughs> See, I've got a dimple in that one as well. 
Do you know, it seems to be the lighter colours in this one that I'm getting more dimpling. Whereas I tend to, on my unboxings, look at the dark colours to see about the dust and things. Because you can tell sometimes about how much junk and dust there is going to be. But dimpling, I might have to start looking at some lighter colours to check the dimpling. Can you see here? Let's see if I can get that. That little row there, that's a bit of pink wax fell out, but there's quite a few there. So yes, that's a note to myself when I'm doing unboxings to actually have a look at the lighter colours. So I don't know, there's not as much dimpling in the dark colours unless it's because um, it's harder to see. I don't know. But when I'm doing my diamonds I do select them you know I, I choose them as I go along and actually when you multiplace that's harder to do because unless it's obvious like that row you might just get an odd little dimple and you place your diamonds and then notice it so I've had to pick out a few of those type of things with my tweezers and um, these are the tweezers that I use I love them my needle point tweezers um, and they're great for getting in the cracks for the pink wax and also they're great for lifting out any dimply ones because they can get right into the diamond and you just scoop it up. So if you've not had to do that before then lucky you. But that is a good, a good way of pulling them up without disturbing a lot of them around. And those tweezers, by the way, I got from Spell Queen in their kit. I still say that although Diamond Art Club kits have vastly improved, I loved my new one and my unboxing. Um, so, but the Spell Queen ones, I, they do those little storage boxes within the tool kit and they do those beautiful tweezers. So, um, I still think they are the best toolkits you can get. And they have this thing where you can say whether you want the toolkit or not. So it saves lots of waste. I mean, honestly, I would say um, get a toolkit because of the little storage box. I mean, it's only little, but it's so good. Um, you know, it's good for those little bitty you know, little packs of diamonds. And if you do order from Dreamer Designs, Spell Queen, Diamond Art Club, and you've never ordered from them before, then please do have a look in my description box because I've got some affiliated links in there which will give you a discount from each of the companies if it's your first order. And it's the discount is on the complete order so do have a look. And they do give me, the company gives me a little bit of money back if you do do that link. So thank you very much if you do. Just so that you are aware of that. It doesn't cost you any more. The, the company just pays me. It's like a commission. <laughs> For my superb sales skills. <laughs> Honestly, I am not a saleswoman. Oh, dear me. Um, and I am very honest in my videos. I don't say, you know, oh, it's fabulous so that you buy things. I am truthful with it. Uh, but no, I'm really not a salesperson at all. <laughs> I get quite embarrassed about selling things, you know. Um, oh, no, that's reminded me of a story. <laughs> oh, God, me and my stories. Oh, <laughs> uh, yes. Well, here we go. Here's a story. Hopefully it'll make you smile. I know that some people do like them. <laughs> when I had my first job, actually, it might have been my second little Saturday job. I was about 14 years old and I needed a Saturday job because I like to go and buy my own clothes in the market, you know. <laughs> Um, and my own makeup because I really loved purple lipstick at that age. Ugh, I can't imagine now. But anyway, <laughs> uh, 
It was the 80s, by the way. I need to add. It was the 80s. Anyway. Um, so, yes, I got a little Saturday job in a news agents in the town centre. So it was quite a big news agents. And um, actually, oh, there, I admit this, because I did cheat a little bit in my interview. I'm not very good at mental maths. I think I've improved a little bit. <laughs> So part of my interview was um, they put lots of chocolate bars on the counter and said, right, I want you to add this up for me in your head. And I was thinking, oh, no, oh, no. And I was a bit panicked and a bit worried about it. And then a customer came in and distracted the owner. So I had more time to do it. And I... I so I did cheat a little bit um, and he was, you know, because I wasn't supposed to, he sort of said, don't look at them yet, wait for it till I get back. Well, of course, I did look at the prices and I did quickly do it, work it out. And then he came back <laughs> and I was like, and he said, right, OK, are you ready to add these up then? And I was like, yes, that's fine. <laughs> and, um, and he said, OK, then, right, these are the prices and told me what the prices were and I acted all innocent and sort of went uh, mm, uh, and you know did a bit of fake counting <laughs> and then said the answer <laughs> which was correct so he was like oh yes that's very good that was quite quick <laughs> Oop. anyway well you know it wasn't a massive lie it was just a little bit of a cheat <laughs> Anyway, I got the job, funnily enough. <laughs> and so I'd go there every Saturday. And my first part of the job, you know, before you're allowed on the counter with the working with the tills and things, you have to work yourself up to that point. So my first job was to look at the sweet stock. I mean, if you know me and sweets, you'll know that it's kind of like an ideal job for me. Looking at the sweet counter, count how many chocolate bars we might need and things like that and then go into the stores and get the stock out and put them onto the counter so that there's always plenty for people to choose from. So that was what my first job was. And in those days you had the like, you know, the little penny sweets that you could get a selection of. A bit like Woolies Pick and Mix, but it wasn't... Um, on the woolly scale because <laughs> they were fabulous so they said right you were allowed to eat as many penny sweets as you want and so of course on the first week I ate loads it was like oh this is fantastic every time I went back into the storeroom to get more chocolate bars I had a few penny sweets and things oh you get sick of that after a while you just Honestly, you go into the storeroom and, it, and you can smell the sweets and the chocolate and it just it puts you off. I mean, only while I worked there, I have to say, because I was soon on the sweets again when I stopped working. <laughs> um, so, yes, I did that for quite a while, but that was nothing to do with sales. That was just, you know, if anybody asked me anything, I'd just sort of point them in the right direction rather than actually do a sale. Well, I think I might have done quite well at that because he wanted to skip me working on the counter, on the sweet counter taking money for sweets. He wanted me to work on the ice cream machine. Oh my goodness, the ice cream machine. Ugh, it was not my ideal job at all so it was to serve customers and you know the cones and have the like the whirly ice cream on the top yes that's what I had to do I had to swirl ice cream on the top of this cone and it sounds easy doesn't it well this machine honestly I think it had a thing against me I couldn't stop it <laughs> So I would ask the customer, oh, well, how, what would you like today? How can I help? And they'd say uh, 99 or whatever. 
And so I'd start the machine. It was just like a lever, like a and it would come out and you had to swirl the ice cream around the outside of the cone up to the top. So it sort of started wide and spiraled up to a point. Oh my God, that's an art form. It really is an art form. <laughs> and then it would get to the top and I'd do the lever and it wouldn't stop. So this top bit was getting higher and higher. Oh dear, it was bad. It was really bad. It was really embarrassing. I mean, they yes, they got a massive ice cream because I couldn't stop the machine. But unfortunately, there was a bit of a complaint one day because to stop the ice cream, I had to, you know, hygiene and all of that. I had to use my finger and go uh, across the top of the ice cream to separate it from the machine. And then I handed them the ice cream and I'd actually stuck my finger in their ice cream. So, oh, it was horrendous. It really wasn't my finest hour at all. So <laughs> it was embarrassing. It was awkward. I'm sure I stammered a lot <laughs> because I was just, oh, I dreaded it. I dreaded it. So, yeah, poor little 14-year-old me left to do that. Um, and I think after the complaint, I think I was taken off it. Either that or a left, one of the two. <laughs> oh, yeah, so I don't think sales are my forte. I get too embarrassed. <laughs> so, I've, I don't think I've ever been in sales since. Have I? Oh, I did do um, a little bit. I was like a sales person in a baby shop. I think I might have mentioned this about demonstrating prams and how difficult that is because they were all different. So, yeah. <laughs> now, I'm much better at admin. <laughs> and I do work in accounts right now, so I think my adding up has slightly improved my mental maths, but... Um, well, you would hope so, wouldn't you? <laughs> Working in accounts. <laughs> oh, the things we do, though, as our first jobs. Oh. My first, first job, I was a cleaner in an office. In an office um, block. I mean, that had stories of its own. It was quite an old block and... Um, again in the center of town and it was like um you know people hire office space so there were all different businesses in there but it was quite it was quite an old building and honestly it was quite spooky when you're in there on your own on an evening so i worked sort of um, when everybody had gone home i suppose so that you weren't disrupting their work day um and when you're doing a whole floor by yourself it's, yeah, quite spooky. There was definitely, and I know I'm a bit woo-woo and stuff like that, if you've seen my videos before, and um, I am a bit woo-woo about spiritual things. Um, but, yeah, there were certain offices and certain spaces that I just had to run past because I just, you know, it, it didn't feel quite right. And then one day I was up hoovering. So when we arrived, let me start from the beginning. When we arrived, we'd had, had to see the team leader. Bearing in mind, I was probably only 13 at this point. It was my very first job after school. I'd go home and then walk to the office block to work, probably about five, half five, something like that. Um, yeah, and we'd all be allocated what floor we were on and what, hoover we were going to use etc <laughs> sounds really weird now but anyway we were we were allocated our hoover <laughs> um and off we'd go in the old lifts um up to the floor whatever floor you were on and start hoovering out all of the offices and the corridors etc well one day somebody was off work they were probably poorly i can't remember so I had a floor and a bit to do. We were sort of 
sharing. I can't remember what floor I was on, but it was high. It's probably, well, I say high. It wasn't, it's not like a massive skyscraper building. It's an old building. It was probably like five floors in the whole building. So I was probably on something like floor four. And I needed to get down to a floor below me after I've done my bit to help out whoever was on the floor below with theirs. So we were sort of sharing another portion of the job. And I had to go into the lift. Now, normally we would travel on in the lift, you know, together. Everybody would be sort of um, together, not alone in the lift. But this time, because of that situation, I was on the lift on my own. And what happened? Yes, the lift conked out halfway between floors. And as I say, I kept getting like these just weird feelings in certain parts of the building. So being in the lift on my own was actually quite scary. I didn't like it at all. I was quite afraid. The lift was sort of swaying. It was like one of those old lifts that have, um, you know, the sort of, um, oh, what they're called, like the gates on them before the main door. You have to close this sort of caged gate thing and then close the lift door. Um, yeah, so I ended up befriending the Hoover. <laughs> I gave it a name and started talking to it so it felt like I was with somebody because it was really quite scary. I kept thinking at any minute this lift is just going to fall. It was swaying. Um, anyway, it was fine. The emergency man came and got me out. Yeah, so that was my first job. <laughs> I'm not sure which was worse. <laughs> I'm not sure which job was worse because at least, you know, hoovering a floor by yourself, fine. Um, you know, nobody to deal with as such, to ask you questions or to complain about you, I suppose. But, you know, in the sweet shop at the news agents, I got to eat sweeties, so, yeah. There was fours and against for each, let's put it that way. I can't remember how much I earned for a Saturday. Uh, I don't know, it might have been something like eight pounds. Used to get my little brown pay packet with the amount on and the cash inside. It's probably about eight pounds, I think. But you could buy quite a lot for that <laughs> in those days. I could probably get a new outfit from the market. Because at that time we had a really good indoor market. Um, and it had all sorts of different stalls in there from, well, there was like, it was like double story. So you had your meat and your fruit and your fish as you walked into the market. And some of the little clothes bits were up there as well. And then you would go down the stairs into, well, there was a cafe and there was like a music sh shop down there as well. So music oh and there was little sort of um costume jewelry stalls down there they were always good and cheap makeup as well so yeah all the kids from school used to meet up and go to the market for the next glam session <laughs> doesn't sound glamorous but it was at the time And then we'd go for lunch and there was like um, an American diner. Oh, it was ever, it was ever so glamorous to go there because in those days, you know, anything American was like, oh, it's special. It's really special. Um, Kim Wilde had been singing about We're the Kids in America. You know, it was all living in the UK. America was just like this exotic place that was ever so superbly cool. And... Um, yeah, so having an American diner was just, oh, glam personified. And, oh, the little fries. 
I mean, that was completely new. You know, we're used to English big fat chips, but oh no, American fries. Oh, ever so, ever so sophisticated. <laughs> <laughs> and they used to come in the little takeaway red packet. Well, that was, you know, these were the times when you watched E.T. and you were like, oh my goodness, they can call up for a delivery to their house. That is amazing because we didn't have that. And it came... I think in E.T. they ordered a Chinese and it came in like this carton and you could eat out of the carton. Wow, that was something exotic as well. We didn't have that either. You know, when we got a takeaway, we'd have to put it on plates when we got home and things. We didn't have like the E.T., you know, like the, the nice Chinese cartons and things. So, um, yeah, quite interesting when you think back now. I'm just going to remove that because that's not right. Where's those tweezers? I've got one here that's attached to another one and it's creating too much of a gap. So I'm going to pull that one off. Put two other ones in there. Yes, yeah, so this American diner as well sold the longest hot dog ever. <laughs> I can't remember how long the hot dog was, but I want to say something like two foot. <laughs> it was huge and it came in a bun as well. I don't know where they got these things from. They were massive, really good. Uh, yeah. With ketchup and mustard on. <laughs> I mean, can you imagine how cool we looked sitting in this diner thinking we were it? and eating this massive long hot dog <laughs> with our purple lipstick on and our cheap market clothes, <laughs> our cheap costume jewellery. Oh, of course, in the 80s, it was all about diamante. So we would have these dangly diamantes. And probably our lace gloves on, come to think about it as well. You know, the fingerless lace gloves like Madonna. Oh dear me, those were the days, those were the days, weren't they? I thought with a bee's knees. And I used to make um, headbands, like, you know, um, yeah, all I can say is headbands out of my old tights, plaited. Um, together and then I'd make them into a circle and put them in my hair you know like to hold your hair back um, so I'd have my <laughs> I'd be sat there in all of that garb plus my old tights on my head <laughs> oh my god I'm sure I washed them first though <laughs> I'm sure I will have done and though in those days I wore like different coloured tights, so I'd have like blue, black, white, because you'd have your tights on and then your bobby socks over the top. Um, so I had different colour tights, opaque. Well, not always opaque, to be fair. Not flesh coloured at all, ever. Oh no, not nude tights ever. Gosh. Whereas now, it's all nude tights are the thing. Now then, if you wore nude tights, you were like your granny. Like, no, what are you doing? <laughs> and some of the tights as well then, they had, oh, hang on a minute, I'll finish this quickly. They had those um, little designs at the back, like little, um, oh, what's it called? Like the velvety finish. Um... Like Devore, is it? Where it's like cut out velvet up the back of your leg. Very, very nice. Very glam. And sometimes even little sparkly demontes on those as well. I'm very nearly finished without even thinking about it. Look, I've got two more diamonds to place. Oh no, I've got... Right, let's do these fours first. Can you imagine finishing and then not doing the countdown to our Tic Tacs? 
I was I was back in the 80s for a minute there, guys. I'm sorry about that. Right. We are going to get our tic-tac boxes ready or anything you can shake. <laughs> you can shake whatever you like. <laughs> I'm going to shake my AB crystals. I've got two more to put in and then we're going to shake it in celebration. So, three... Two, one, shake them! Yeah! We have a finish! Ta da! Right, let's have a drink. You'll be surprised. I've got water today, a little glass of water. I might add a gin in it later. <laughs> Cheers, everybody. I normally have a cup of tea, but it's just too hot. So a nice, refreshing cup of water is perfect. Right, it has to be done. Ta-da! Sweet is. And I've got love hearts for us today because we always like to share a sweetie on a finish on Stone Magpie. So choose a colour. You can have pink, you can have green, you can have yellow or you can have white. I think that's a lilac there as well. Oh and there's an orange. Okay take your pick because I'm going to reveal the message on each colour. So close your eyes, think what colour you might want. Did you think pink? Here we are. I hope it's not rude. <laughs> Oh, you're mine. Oh, that's a nice one. You're mine. Did you... You can only have one. <laughs> you can't have another one as well. Did you choose green? Okay, eeny, meeny, miny, moe, because there's a few greens. Let's go this one. Oh, <gasps> lover. Ooh, lover. Ooh, greens. <laughs> Did you choose yellow? We're gonna go yellow. Let's party! Do 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 do. That's a brilliant one. Well done. Who chose yellow? What else have we got? We've got orange still to go. Did you choose orange? If you did, I'm not choosing that one. That says kiss because I can see the message. I'm going to choose this one that we can't see, but I like that message, Kiss. Mm. <gasps> I want you. Mm. Okay, I think it means the sweetie. <laughs> oh, I don't know if I should stop there. I'm getting a bit hot under the collar. <laughs> Might need another glass of water. Oh, quick drink. Right, what colour? Oh, we've got a lilac one. And a white one to go. So did you choose a lilac? If you did. Ah, uh, perfect. I love that. Because we are practically perfect in every way on our channel. And we have one more to go for those white people that chose the white. Oh. A little love heart smiley face emoji from me to you. I really hope that you enjoyed your sweeties and that it didn't fizz too much up your nose because those love hearts can be quite fizzy. <laughs> right, I'm going to get a view from far away and let's talk about the detail in this diamond painting. Okay, I'm going to try and do it in quarters and then try and get a complete view for you at the end. So all of those weeks ago, we started in this corner with those layers of colour in the sky. And I still love that. I still think it's really effective. Then we moved on to the beautiful spring blossom tree, which for me is my favourite part of the whole painting. I love that. And when the sunlight catches, it twinkles with those AB sprinklings for the blossom. And when I get to the end, I will do a close up view for you on that to see if you can spot those ABs within that tree. It is fabulous. 
We can also see down here the bushes with the flowers and our little deer friend here. And he is a little deer friend. There are also a deer here looking at us, looking forward. And there's a deer, deer here eating the grass bent over with his head down. So we've got three deers. Then moving across, we've got here the part of the stream that goes all the way along the painting. And here, you might just be able to see that here, we've got two swans. Now the detail in the swans, I don't think stands out that well. You can see the swan and you can see, but it, I think it's because the beaks are there that you can tell that what they are rather than the bodies of the swans as well. They sort of blend in a little bit. I'm going to move to the left hand side. Here we are on the top left and I feel that this part of the painting feels different somehow to the rest. I don't know if it's the trees and the different colours because this bit feels quite nearly autumnal to me rather than spring but I absolutely love the trees on this side. I love the detail in this one with all of those different colours. It's like the fur is spread out and then you've got the darkness of this one here and then those beautiful autumnal colours coming down. And then we've got this bush here. If you remember, I wasn't quite sure about this part of the painting there, whether to change them out a little bit. I might, but at the moment I'm leaving it as it is meant to be. I think if I change them out, it might look a bit too forced, that bush, a bit too uniform. So I'm debating about that still at the moment. So I'm going to leave it as it is. And then we can see this wonderful cabin. I mean, that, I want to live there. I just want to live there. It looks fabulous and looks so welcoming with the colours within the windows themselves, with the stairs down onto this lovely little pathway through and having this bench where we can sit and soak in some lovely sunshine or have a nice cup of tea and probably a cake if it's me on this lovely little table and chairs. But look at the details that you get from, it's the textures of the plant in this one that I think really does draw you into the painting. So we've got the spikes. I think that could be a spirea. We've got the blossoms in the bushes. If I push that up a little bit and show you just this area here with the different textures. So you've got this one, you've got what I think is probably lavender here. And then the oranges of the flowers in this bush, the pinks. So it leads you round the garden. It's really, really clever. And look how effective this pathway is down. There's so many colours in that pathway to create that effect. Right, I'm going to show you the bottom half of this section now. So here is the pathway that we've walked down to get to the bridge where there's a little squirrel or chipmunk sat perched there. <laughs> and then it leads down into some more of this wonderful detailing. Again, the plants with the grasses and then having those little different highlights at the top of those. And here, look at that with the spires and then the little daisies interspersed between and then the rocks, the details on those rocks. We've got um, some more of the stream or a little pond there. That could be a pond because I think the stream goes this way. So I'm, I'm going to presume that's a pond with the lilacs and the roses here. Absolutely superb details. This is the section that we've just completed here with this pathway continuing down to wherever that will lead. Okay, look at that by the way. Look at that. I love that flower there. I think it's just got such a lot of detail in it. And I love these as well. And these have got the AB sprinkles as well. A lot of AB sprinkled along this picture that just catch your eye as a little surprise as you're looking. So there's some here too. 
So instead of it being like solidly blocked AB, it is a suggestion of, and they just catch your eye in a really pretty way. Okay, let's have a look at the bottom right. So here's our dear friend up here. So as we go down, we can see the rocks and the details here that lead down to this waterfall, this little trickling waterfall down to the stream with a bridge over and a nice garland of flowers. I'm going to say, yeah, no, I'll just say flowers. They're, they might not be roses, but um, it's a really pretty design across the bridge to this bright corner of just floral bloomness. <laughs> And I have to admit, when I diamond painted this bit, I didn't realise I was diamond painting ducks. And when I stood back, I thought, oh, I'd forgotten there were ducks here. And they are oh, fabulous details in there. I think they're called, are they mallard ducks? Hmm, not sure. Hopefully I'm right. With all of their blues and greens in their head. And then the two little ducklings and the shadows as well in the water. That part is really clever and especially when you don't realise what you're diamond painting and you stand back and see the detail. Such a lovely surprise. Now I am going to be truthful and say that when I reached probably here before the bridge I thought okay I've got lots of detail in this picture now I don't think this part is necessary and um, I don't know if it's because I feel like I've been doing it a long time, but I just felt it was too much detail. But I have completely changed my mind. Absolutely. I'll show you a full view and you can see the full picture. Now that you can see the full finished picture, what do you think? I am so pleased that I continued because I really did wonder about cutting this bottom bit off. Ah, I know you'll probably scream at me, but oh, I am so pleased that I continued with it and got that detail in, especially as I say with the little ducks and the roses and the pond and these lilacs and all of the different plantings just make this picture. There are so many things to look at. Look at the rock details. Oh, it is beautiful and I am so pleased with it. Yes, it was a bit of a chore at the end, but that's because of me wanting to get it finished. But I've loved diamond painting this one. I really have. I've enjoyed the colours in it. I've enjoyed the finish of it. I am very picky with my diamonds. I will show you that I have got a tray of dropped diamonds here. So I've got the elation diamonds and my square diamonds that I've dropped out of the tray and put the colour away. So I've just kept those in a tray. But this tray is the tray of my junky diamonds with either little nobules on, with dimples in. And I kept that tray separate from about this point here. So that's how much I got out of it for, I would say, the second half of the picture. Going to the leftover diamonds, as I said, I did get a little bit worried about some of the diamond quantities. I have been able to finish the picture um, with some leftovers in every colour. As you can see, there are not loads, but there was enough to complete it and take out the junk diamonds. And in this box, it's a bit of a mix, I have to say. Some things I've got more of than others. Yeah, you can probably tell here that they're all pretty low. But at least there was enough to finish and that's the main thing. I will be adding those into my general storage. I don't think the quality is tip top enough to go into my folder storage. If you've seen that, I tend to keep the really, really nice diamonds in my folder storage. Otherwise, they go in my general storage for my squares. 
So these will be going in the general storage, but that's not to say I'm not happy with them. They do have a nice finish on them. And I'm going to now get you a close up view of the spring tree. So hopefully you can see the ABs in that. So here is the close up of the spring blossom tree. And hopefully you can see here the glinting ABs around everywhere. So it's not solidly AB. They are picked out in parts of the blossom and they just twinkle at you as you glance at it when you walk by. It is so effective and I think even more effective for the fact that they are sprinkled in rather than being a big mass. I'm going to show you this tree from a bit further away. So here's the tree from a bit further away and hopefully you can see in the sunlight here the twinkling of those ABs. This kit had two AB colours, being the white and the lilac. So you should be able to see those within that tree there. The ABs were also in the deer's spots, <laughs> as well as throughout the water. You may see some here and on the swans. There were little spatterings on the swans and in this bush here so as I say oh and the steps going down just subtle hints of ABs so there we have it a completed diamond painting and how beautiful is it do you like this one would you be interested in getting this one oh I think it's got some fabulous details in it as I've already spoken to you about so if you do want to purchase one and if it is your first purchase head to the description box below for that affiliated link to get 15 percent off thank you for joining me anyway i really do appreciate you watching and i hope that you catch me next time for my next diamond painting take care everyone bye for now